everyone and welcome to today's art vlog. Today is a super foggy day in Budapest, which I think makes it the perfect day for a museum. And we're heading to the Hungarian National Gallery to see the new exhibition of Vasily's work that just opened. Janos Vasori is an incredible figure in 20th century Hungarian painting. His style is very diverse, and this show is a great way to explore the various styles and the different subject matter that he focused on throughout his life. Vasori was born in 1867 in Kapusvar, Hungary. He spent two years studying at the Royal Drawing School in Budapest before studying at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich and the Academy Julian in Paris. He was quite well regarded during his lifetime with many major museums and galleries either purchasing his works or commissioning him to create a new piece. As many Art Nouveau artists had done, he didn't just limit himself to painting either. He created an altarpiece, he designed the textiles for the Hungarian Hall at the International Exhibition in Venice, um, among many other things. And many people consider that Vasari was the artist that really introduced the Art Nouveau style to Hungary but he was also a leading figure of some other major movements at the time, such as Art Deco, Impressionism, and Expressionism. This is proven by the fact that he was also a founding member of the Circle of Hungarian Impressionists and Naturalists. One of the most fascinating things about this exhibition is the provenance or the history behind some of the works on display. When Vasari died, he left almost all of his works to the National Gallery. However, because of the museum moving locations and potentially hiding some works around the time of the Second World War, around 40 of his artworks were left undiscovered until very recently. In 2016, art historians found two rolled up bunches of canvas hidden in storage, each containing 20 paintings by Vasari that were previously unknown. There was some reference to these works in some paperwork, but they were never recorded in the museum's official inventory. This means that they likely came directly from the artist's estate. And this exhibition is featuring 24 of these recently discovered pieces, making this overview of the artist's work that much more exciting. The exhibition begins with works created early in Vasari's career, covering roughly the 1880s to the early 1900s. I was more familiar with his later works, which are of a more impressionistic style, so it was really surprising to see the style of these. The paint is applied so smoothly and the scenes look much more naturalistic and realistic than what I was used to. Several of these works were commissioned, which might explain the diverse subject matter that we're seeing. But I think in these works we can also get a sense that he's grappling with his own style. He's learned a lot of different techniques and styles throughout his education and all these different schools, and now he's really deciding what his style is as an artist. As we progress on to works created in the 1920s, we can start to see his impressionistic style emerging. This piece, The Life with Buddhist Monk, is composed with loose brushstrokes, meaning he's using these big splotches of paint to create the scene. Whereas his earlier works had paint that was well blended and created a smooth surface, this painting looks a bit rough and less realistic. It's also quite interesting to consider the significance of the subject matter within the context of the time period. In the early 20th century, objects from Asia were slowly becoming available in Europe, and they were often bought or collected by the middle class. Vasari noticed this rise in popularity of these objects to emulate a sense of an exotic or other culture, and he chose to portray these type of subjects in several of his paintings. While this could be a commentary on a globalizing society at the time, it was already quite common for artists to portray this type of subject matter, drawing on these Asian objects that had come over to Europe. Um, we notice this a lot in Impressionist and Post-Impressionist artists. The next group of paintings show a theme that Vasari chose to paint several times, the biblical story of Solon. He was fascinated by the story and the idea of the seductress that appears innocent but is also vengeful and erotic. This also relates to popular culture at the time and the emerging concept of the femme fatale. In some cases, like this, he paints a scene in the context of a theater, or in more intimate scenes focused on portraying Salome herself. Here we can also see the differing styles of Vasari, and for the first time in this exhibition we see him using these flat brushstrokes to convey the scene. 
no longer we have this thick buildup of paint, and in some cases you can even see the canvas peeking through beneath the paint. But he has maintained the abstraction and the simplification which we saw in the Buddha painting, and we can tell he's not concerned with creating a very realistic depiction. In this painting of Salom, we also see a new color palette emerging, one filled with more vibrant colors. The exhibition continues on to show a group of works that Vasari created in Hungary. This piece was created in his home in Tata, a city close to Budapest, and I think really starts to show his style in the Art Deco fashion. The woman's pose and features, the flat perspective, and even the way that the flowers appear as ornamentation all draw from the Art Deco style that was born from the decorative arts. The next group of paintings are primarily still lifes of flowers or of nude women, and I think this really bridges the gap between his more decorative style inspired by Art Nouveau and Art Deco, and transitions to his colorful and expressionist later works. This work was one of my favorites in the exhibition, as it shows the city of Budapest filled with the hustle and bustle of people. It combines several different perspectives of the city into one, adding to a sense of chaos in the work. Everyone seems to be minding their own business, in a rush, and the figure of Christ on the cross goes largely unnoticed, even by the viewer who is maybe distracted by the rest of the work. The study created for the work is also included, where we can see Vasari refining the composition and colors for the final work. A similar piece was created while Vasari was in Paris, depicting several men viewing a brightly lit fountain. The work seems to capture the elegance of city life in the slightly more geometric and art deco inspired piece. We also recognize these colorful spots at the top from the earlier work he created at his home in Tata. This incredible work was one of the recently discovered pieces. The final group of works were those created late in his life in the 1930s on his trips to the beach in Italy. In these works, it's interesting to notice how we can see some connections to his earlier pieces. For instance, we still see the flat brush strokes and large sections of one color that give an abstract feeling to the work. In many of these pieces, we still see the canvas peeking through beneath the paint as he's not concerned with blending any of the colors or covering the surface with paint. The bright palette we saw slowly emerge in his art is in full effect here, with many of these pieces reminiscent of the Fauvist or Matisse. However, we can also notice that some of these pieces look a bit more like sketches. There is less detail given to them than we saw in some of his earlier pieces. Since many of these are showing beach scenes, we can imagine that he was either painting them in the moment, quickly capturing the moment, or perhaps later just remembering the scene. The idea of a fleeting moment on vacation seems tied closely with this quick and abstract depiction of the scene. Thank you so much for joining me on my visit to the Hungarian National Gallery. I hope you're able to see some new art or discover more about Vasavi. I look forward to sharing more art adventures here on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe to stay involved. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the exhibition in the comments below or any art topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.